it's a over 2.30, so let's call this meeting to order. Um, today is the uh, August 30th special meeting for TCC, um, starting with self-introductions, starting from my right. Hi, Jim Conradi with AC Transit. Leah Greenblatt with WIC Tech. John Cunningham with Contra Costa County. Jason Chan with City of Orinda. Andy Dillard, Town of Danville. Eric Hughes, City of Pleasant Hill. Uh, Andy Smith, uh, Transpac and City of Walnut Creek. Nikki Folletta, Bart. Tom Horaeus, Tried Out the Transit. Steve Kersavan, City of Brentwood. Kevin Rohani, City of Oakley. And Jerry Fay, Contra Costa County. All right, thank you very much. Um, moving on, any uh, members of the public who like to talk about any item is not on the agenda? Hearing none, okay. Uh, moving to approval of summary of actions from our June 15th meeting. Move approved. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. The ayes have it. Okay, moving on to consent calendar. Um, I do have a speaker card here for consent item number three, the Contra Costa County Kruger Pass Road truck lane northbound request for approval for peer review design, about peer review of the design. Um, so unfortunately I had to pull it, um, but can we, do we have a motion for the remaining of the consent calendar? <coughs> so moved. Second. Second. All in favor? Ayes have it. Now going back to consent calendar item number three, um, I got a speaker card from Bruce Olson from Bike East Bay. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Bruce Olson, citizen of Pittsburgh, from Bike East Bay, speaking for bicyclists in all of Contra Costa County. Thank you for entertaining this uh, construction project for truck climbing, climbing lanes on the northbound side of Kirker Pass on the Concord side. Our concern, however, is with the southbound direction. That is, you climb out of Pittsburgh, you make the summit, you wipe the sweat off of your brow, and you start coasting down the hill into Concord. The first thing you come up against is a blind right-hand curve with a sign that says, slow to 35. Nobody does, but the sign is there. The problem is, although we have a marked shoulder on most of the climb and most of the descent, unfortunately, in this blind curve, there is no marked shoulder at all. This is a problem. Since you're going to spend a lot of money making it more efficient for motorists to drive on this project, we ask that you spend a little bit of money making it more safe, or not more safe, safer for bicyclists to bicycle on this road. Uh, an easy way to do it would be to move the center line just a hair and then you could put in three or four feet of shoulder on the downhill side, on the conquer side. This is just across the street from where you're building the truck climbing lane anyway. Thank you very much. Thank you, uh, Mr. Olson, for your comments. Um, I guess we don't have anybody from the county to Chime in, right? <laughs> That's that nice about the project design. Wow, thanks a lot, Eric. <laughs> no, no, Eric. No, I didn't mean like, you know, you know what I mean. You know what I mean. I didn't even know Kirker Pass Road was in the county. <laughs> no, but. <laughs> well, I mean, I'm sorry about that. No, that's not, that's not what I meant. Um, but I guess, is that something that we can probably take a look at in the project design? I know it's a 95 right now, but. Um, I I'm not sure exactly where this curve falls within the project limits. It's on the if it's on the southbound side, it's it's not within the project limits. Um, but there's a, a median barrier out there, so it's not so simple to just move the center line of the roadway. So okay. we have plans for a future project for southbound truck climbing lanes. Uh, maybe we could address it at that time. Okay. 
Alrighty. Um, but we'll, we'll, you know, um, your, your comments, uh, Bruce, is uh, well taken, and uh, you know we'll, we'll take a look at it. You know, I guess the appropriate time in the next project. Um, but with that, um, can I have a motion for approving this consent item and the peer review comments? What? I'll move uh, to approve item number three of the consent calendar. I'll second. I have a motion and a second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Thank you. <laughs> Okay. Moving to uh, regu regular agenda items, number four, project monitoring. Um, Stephanie? Hi, good afternoon, everyone. So this project monitoring report is in your packet every month. Um, so just a little review of them. Um, attachment A through D are monthly monitoring reports for STIP, OBAC, inactive, and ATP projects. I would like to bring your attention especially um, to attachment C, which is the inactive project list um, and make sure that you guys are aware of all the milestone dates um, to prevent your projects from being deobligated. And in that note, um, actually FHWA has been alerting Caltrans that California is well over the target for inactive obligations. Um, California is approaching 10%. In active, in active obligations, which is well over FHWA's 2% target. And if the state as a whole doesn't improve in that rate, um, FHWA can and will unilaterally you know, deobligate projects once they become inactive. So this has come to attention of MTC as well as Caltrans, so I hope all of you are um, being mindful of that. Milestone dates. I checked the latest project list this month, um, this morning, and it looks like all the projects that were listed with August 21st dates have all um, taken action. So I think that's good. And the next set of projects have an upcoming milestone date of November 20th. So please um, continue to do a very good job in um, complying with all the deadlines. And hopefully, then we won't, as a county have projects deobligated. And then lastly, just in regards to that, I know some jurisdictions are having um, problems awarding the construction contract because of higher than expected bids. Um, just wanted to um, remind you to please let Caltrans know ASAP. I know there are two jurisdictions in the county, Danville is one um, and Clayton. Both have tried to have gone out to bid and got really high bids and they therefore cannot award an invoice in the, in the amount of time that they're supposed to, I think six months after E76. So just make sure you let Caltrans know they're aware that this is happening. It's been a problem for in the recent months. Um, I think as long as you keep them in the loop, they will help you extend your deadlines. So just remember to contact Caltrans if that's happening to you, to your federal aid projects. And then in regards to OBAC 2, um, as you know, we, the authority staff has been helping the locals in entering the OBAC 2 project into FMS. Our deadline is tomorrow, so hopefully after tomorrow, we will be able to update the OBAC 2 project list in the agenda item next month or whenever we have the next meeting. And then lastly, for this item, in the um, staff report, I've added a little blurb this time about SB1. So you might be aware that SB1 will be providing additional money for your local streets and roads maintenance projects. And that is to begin on November 1st. The CTC approved the local streets and roads program reporting guidelines this month at their meeting. In order to receive the additional funding, cities and county need to submit a proposed project list and expenditure reports to, uh, to CTC every year, fiscal year. The proposed list of projects need to be included in the local agency's adopted budget, which need to be approved by city or town councils. The CDC is developing a standard form, which would be in Excel format, for locals to um, submit their project list. And I think they're trying to formalize or finalize this project list, and you should be able to download the list of the Excel form um, through the CTC website in September, early September. The due date for this form is October 16th. Um, and if you haven't done so already, you might want to check out 
the reporting guidelines that are found on the CTC website to see what's required of your agency in order to receive this additional funding. Um, yeah, and then I know some jurisdictions in the Bay Area have had to go back to their council to adopt a new CIP list in order to include SB1 projects. So if you need to do that, please allow time to go to your council. And lastly, I think um, to make it more transparent on how we're using SB1 funds, when you turn in your Excel form to CTC, authority is asking that you submit this list to us also. We're hoping to kind of maybe present other projects that are proposed with SB1 funding to be, we will post it on our um, CCT website to show, you know, what the projects are and their progress when they're com completed. We will note as such so that the public knows how SB1 money is being spent in their communities. So that concludes my report. I'll be happy to answer any questions that you may have. I have a question. Andy? If I could go back really quick to the, uh, thank you for your presentation, by the way, um, the inactive obligations list. Did I hear correctly that the, I think it's four items on here that have uh, something due on August 21st have actually done that since this was printed? Yeah, so I was, yeah. So Two of them are ours. So I, just <laughs> <laughs> so I checked and uh, they said like under review. So I assumed it was turned in before that August 21st deadline, like that those two projects are no longer red flagged. My list is under review, so I think it's fine. And the next set, the next chunk of projects I'll have the November 20th. The 20th. Yeah. So just um, remember that date for the next submittal of invoices. Thanks. Okay. Any other questions? Thank you, Stephanie. Moving on to item number five, the 2018 STIP candidate projects. Oh, it's too. me again. Mm -hmm. So this is an action item, actually, and it's for the 2018 STIP. The authority issued the call for project, as you know, in June for the 2018 STIP. In response to the call, we received six project applications totaling um, $46 million in a request. Um, the final fund estimate was approved by the CTC on August 16th. There is approximately $32 million for new programming in the 2018 STIP after taking into account of the following. $13 million to reprogram the BART station modernization project that was deleted in the 2016 step. $1.4 million for three years of planning, programming, and monitoring activities for MTC and CCTA staff. $31.1 million to pay back American Recovery and Reinvestment Act, or ARA funds, for the Calicut project. Uh, just a little background, back in 2009, in order to expedite the expenditures of ARA funds and to maintain construction start date for the Cattle car project, MTC program, $31.1 million in our funds to project to the cattle car project to backfill the STIP funds that were not available at that time. This $31.1 million in 2018 STIP funds is Contra Costa's commitment to pay back the our funds. So after taking into account the three items are listed, again, there is approximately $32 million in the 2018 STIP for programming in fiscal year 2022 and 2023. There are nine members of you, nine of you who served on the STIP subcommittee, as shown on page 5-2. The subcommittee met in early August to evaluate the project applications. The subcommittee was divided into two groups to score the projects independently. After each group scored the applications, scores were compared for consistency. The evaluators scored all six projects except for applications that were submitted by their own jurisdictions. Also, CCTA staff did not participate in the evaluation process, but only facilitated the evaluation. Um, so in attachment A, um, you can see the priority list with the ranking and the average scores for all the applications. The top two projects, which are I-680 SR4 Interchange Improvement Phase 3 and SR4 Operational Improvements, can be fully funded with expected available funding. Due to unlimited step funds, the third round project, City of Richmond Central Avenue at I-80 Local Improvements Project cannot be recommended for their full funding request. However, because the city is able to modify their funding plan to cover the shortfall with other fund sources, staff recommends the project receives the remaining available 2018 step funding. So in conclusion, this is a action item that's seeking your approval for the step subcommittee recommendations of the prioritized list and also to program the available 2018 funds 
or STIP funds to the top three projects. And with your approval action, we will take the recommendation to APC and the board for approval, and then we will also go through the MTC process to program the STIP dollars for the projects. And with that, I will be happy to answer any questions. Any comments? Yeah, Paul. Yeah, I have a question, Stephanie. Um, the State Route 4 operational improvements, you said it was phase, what phase um, was that? Um, it would be for design phase. Oh, for design phase. Yeah. I see. So it, and it's a, a small um, package in okay. the overall that project. My question is, which package it's, is this funding for? It's in the eastbound direction. It would be an additional ox lane between Port Chicago Highway to Willow Pass Road. Okay, and um, why was that chosen over the other packages? We, we met with the traffic consultant, Fair and Peers, and they thought those two packages would be the most benefit for the money that we'll be spending, and they would have a more immediate or apparent result or relief in the congestion. Um, okay. And the funding would just be for design. However, we have Measure J money for PAED for the um, environmental process, and we're hoping maybe we can at least for that phase, look at both directions. So that's something that we're working on. Good answer. Thank you. Thanks. <laughs> Any other questions or comments? Can I move approval? I have a motion. Do I have a second? Second. All right. Um, all in favor? Aye. Ayes have it. And uh, thank you for everybody who served on this uh, this, uh, this committee, review committee, I know it's, uh, it's always kind of difficult to squeeze in extra duties in your already busy schedule. All right, moving on to item number six, uh, responses to comments received on the draft 2017 countywide comprehensive transportation plan. Martin. Good afternoon, Mr. Chairman. Good afternoon, TCC members. Martin Engelman, Deputy Executive Director for Planning at CCTA. And uh, we have before you this afternoon the um, comments that were received on the draft countywide plan, our responses, and uh, we're asking you to review the proposed text changes that we're going to make to the CTP before we take it to the uh, Planning Committee and the Authority in September for adoption. Uh, so uh, as you will recall, this plan went out um, in May, May 24th, last summer, or last spring, I guess that is. We issued the draft CTP, and then after that, we uh, issued the draft EIR in, uh, in June. We received six comment letters. Uh, we got 36 emails through our online public engagement website. Uh, we received four letters on the EIR and we received three letters regarding the action plans for routes of regional significance. So the, um, the letters are in your packet. We have prepared uh, summary responses or master responses that pertain to specific comments that were made in a number of the responses. There are a lot of comments, so we tried to um, uh, put them all together into various groups. But we did get a number of questions regarding our conformance with the Metropolitan Transportation Commission's guidelines for the CTP and whether or not we appropriate, appropriately followed the uh, revised guidelines. There were uh, comments regarding our support for the Bay Area's sustainable community strategies. Um, there are a number of questions regarding our use of projections 2013 versus use of projections 2017, which hasn't been published yet, but there is a new projection set out there that the MTC used for their 2017 RTP. Um, there's um, a number of questions about emerging trends and technologies in transportation, what we're doing about um, climate change and rising tides, and there were some project-specific concerns. So in response to these comments, uh, we did make some specific changes to the CTP. Um, 
East Bay Regional Park Districts. Uh, they proposed revisions that would underscore our commitment to uh, provide trail improvements and support opportunities for walking and biking. And they wanted specific projects added to the 10-year and 20-year project list. Um, and so uh, we actually have a number of trail projects already included in these lists. And uh, we also have bundles of projects, so we really can't, we can't list out every single trail project under the sun, but we did respond to them that we have, we have all of their projects covered and they're actually, we're actually better off not putting the specific projects into this plan since this is a programmatic document. Better off not putting them in than, than, than putting them in. In response to a letter from the Contra Costa County Board of Supervisors, additional detail is provided now to integrate the Northern Waterfront Economic Development Initiative into the vision goals and strategies of the CTP and explain what the funding source is for this initiative and to add a program to initiate an accessible transportation service strategic plan. Those things weren't in the plan, in the draft plan, but we're adding them for the final. And then we did get direction from the authority as well as comments from the Board of Supervisors and uh, various stakeholders that the proposed expansion for the Regional Transportation Mitigation Program uh, where we suggested that fees be collected for ongoing maintenance. That language was specifically deleted and the revisions clarify that the authority intends to continue to use the RTMP to ensure that new development pays the cost attributable to increased demand for transportation facilities, but those are limited to capital improvements. And then uh, uh, to reflect the passage of Senate Bill 1, the Road Repair and Accountability Act of 2017, a new implementation task uh, was added to address how the authority would best take advantage of the funding that will be available and text revisions were included to clarify the potential for SB1 to help meet our identified needs. And then uh, responding to stakeholders' questions about the CTP's commitment to multimodal transportation, text revisions were made to describe the opportunities for transit service expansion of biking and walking and those are supported by our vision goals and strategies. Uh, continuing on to ensure broader understanding of the CTP and what it will offer to Contra Costa a new strategy for education and outreach was added. Um, the uh, a couple of new agencies, a couple of existing agencies were added in the uh, discussion of partners. They weren't included in the draft. The San Francisco Bay Conservation and Development Commission was added and the East Bay Regional Park District were, were added. Uh, technical collect corrections were made to some of the labeling on the maps illustrating the 2013 RTP and the proposed investment program. And then in the 10 and 20 year project list, uh, which is included in appendix, uh, in an appendix to volume two, um, some of the descriptions were expanded to convey more clearly what the project would entail. And then we had a minor clarification about MTC performance targets and uh, certain trail name references were uh, were cor corrected, um, and we also added a few terms to the glossary. So um, we really uh, haven't made a whole lot of changes to the plan, but there are uh, some, and they are shown in your packet, um, starting on page. Let's see, six forty-three are the CTP revisions. And so if you have the draft CTP at hand and it's on our CTP website, you can see starting on page 643 the specific revisions and underlined strikeout that are proposed to be made uh, to the plan, including some map revisions. And then we also include for you the specific letters we received you can see all of the letters, um, the comments received, the official letters, all of the emails, and then the EIR comments. The uh, action plan amendments are going to be undertaken by the Regional Transportation Planning Committee. Those are primarily to the action plans and not to the CTP. And the action plans are subsumed into this document by reference. So 
what we propose to do is we're going to bring the uh, response to comments to the EIR, to the Planning Committee, and to the Authority in September. Um, and we will bring this document that you have before you uh, to them as well. And then after they approve the document, we will issue the final CTP and it will reflect these changes and we'll also issue the, uh, the final EIR. There are a number of EIR components that are not included in your packet tonight, um, but they will be in the, in the Planning Committee packet if you'd like to see our responses to comments on the draft EIR and our uh, findings and facts in support of findings and statement of overriding consideration. That's all going to be in the in the planning packet along with the mitigation and monitoring report. So with that, um, we're asking today for your approval of the proposed changes to the CTP and to recommend that the authority proceed with adoption of the final CTP in September. Thanks, Martin. Um, anybody have any comments? Leah? I have some questions. Mm -hmm. um, maybe I missed this in your presentation, but I read a number of comments uh, related to um, the development fees, the transportation mitigation fees, and their use for operations and maintenance. Um, how are we responding to that? So we received. So we. Um, well, we received, I think, three or four comments regarding that, and um, uh, some came from the um, Building Industry Association, actually indirectly, uh, but Lisa Vorderbergen did testify at one of our meetings, and um, the uh, Economic Partnership commented on this. Um, the authority then directed us to delete any language regarding use of the fees for um, future maintenance or uh, transit operations. So all of that language has been removed from the plan and, and uh, you can find the specific references in the red line strikeout. Um, but if you want me to go over with you. So, and then my other question had to do with the letter from East Bay Regional Park District on page 676-73. And they made a reference that they receive a third of the Measure J sales tax revenue. And I was wondering if you could interpret that uh, amount for us, if, what, what might be the basis of that. But the, the first um, paragraph on of their letter on six dash seven three. Yeah, I, I think what they mean is they receive a third of the bicycle, pedestrian, and trails portion of the measure. Okay. I think that was their intent. Okay. Thanks. <laughs> Any other comments or questions? John? No, I reviewed the revisions and we appreciate, the county appreciates the authority's responsiveness to our input. And uh, if there's no other questions or comments, I would move approval of the staff recommendations. Seconded by Steve. All in favor say aye. Aye. Congratulations. Thank you. Have a good afternoon. <laughs> All right. Any other businesses that anyone want to bring up? All right. I guess the meeting's adjourned.